Okay, here we go with another sensational sound from Mr. Billy Ocean to get you all dancing. Gee, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I've tried everything. Soul, Motown, reggae. I just can't get them to dance. Tomorrow on World Affairs, we devote the entire program to a film from America, which brings to light the effects, both sociological and psychological, of modern warfare. Zach Williams served in the Vietnam War. He witnessed horror, disease, and bloodshed. He went out a man, but came back perfectly normal. <laughs> yes, I'll take this one. It's real comfy. The State Department have refused to issue figures, but we believe there are thousands of Vietnam veterans, just like Zach, who are... <laughs> ...perfectly normal. Monday, 8 p.m. Fire! Hey, hang on a minute. What? Is that ozone friendly? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, every brother. <laughs> Welcome to Carrie <laughs> Paris. <laughs> But it wasn't very funny, though, was it, Norman? Got a time on you, cock. <laughs> what time is it? Half past two. Oh, the times have changed, eh? <laughs> I remember when it was half past one. And half past twelve. <laughs> Then with the good times, times. Eh? happy times. Ah. Eh? Do you remember quarter past ten? Quarter past ten, that's going back a bit, eh? <laughs> Old George were with us then. Eh? Ah, ah. Is he still in the lab? <laughs> no, he's passed on at eleven o'clock. His ticker finally packed up. Not fair, that is a man dying because of his watch stopping. <laughs> Hello. This week on Social Analysis, we examine a problem. A problem which has affected the very young for some considerable time. To all appearances, a normal, healthy, happy toddler. But if we look a little more closely, we see that, in fact, Daniel is completely drunk. Daniel can grow up to become either a human cabbage or worse still, a children's television presenter. <laughs> this is Victoria. So shamelessly and hopelessly 
paralytic. <laughs> that she can hardly walk without assistance. And she doesn't even know what day of the week it is. <laughs> Victoria, can you tell me what day of the week it is? <laughs> Believe it or not, Michael is two years old, although he has the outward appearance of a fully grown tabloid journalist. <laughs> and perhaps the most pathetic sight of all, Young Stephanie, so tanked up, all she can do is lie here, unconscious, reeking of drink. <laughs> so who is to blame? Is it 11 years of Thatcherism? Is it a lack of proper parental control? Or is it merely the fact that most beer nowadays tastes like Woodward's gripe water? <laughs> Whatever the answer, the problem must be solved. And it must be solved before... Oh. <laughs> I heard you hard. <laughs> I heard you is well hard. <laughs> yeah? I heard. You fixed the Franklin brothers. What I heard was, you fixed them well. Good. <laughs> I heard on the street you broke Big John's legs in 29 places. What they're saying was, and what I heard was, his legs was well broke. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, little birdie, cheap, cheap. <laughs> no, boo. You ripped off the Franklin Brothers' heroes and stuck them in a the blender <laughs> for ten minutes. <laughs> what I heard was the Franklin Brothers' logos was well blended. <laughs> <laughs> the boys are saying that you cut off Big John's thumbs and posted them to the BBC. <laughs> and you didn't even put a stamp on the envelope. <laughs> the boys are saying that, aren't they? Yeah. The boys are saying he's well thumbless. <laughs> So? So? Is that so? Yeah, it is so. It's well so. Well, my mate has got a mate who told my mate <laughs> that you cut off the Franklin brothers' testicles <laughs> with a blunt knife and used them as toys for your badger we got. <laughs> what I heard was the brothers was well bollockless. <laughs> That's nothing. <laughs> I heard you smothered Big John's bum with flora, put it in the oven at Gas Mark 2 for 15 <laughs> days. What I heard was Big John's bum was well, well done. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So? So? Well? Well. If you're as hard as you say you are... Yeah. Can you open this packet of peanuts for me? <laughs> Season on four rings opera to the people, starting this Friday with the big fat Northern Opera Company's production of The Marriage of Clitheroe, <laughs> starring Alf Pavarotti <laughs> and Placido de Saggy Bottom. <laughs> We are the biggest, the biggest of biggest, the biggest of big belly bookers about. Bigoted Wigan from Bradford and Bingley, the biggest, most bigoted bastards about. Yorkshire man, Yorkshire man, Yorkshire man.
later in the series, the television debut of Dame Doris Tekanawa in Madame Bugalugs. <laughs> on four with Puccini's aria Nest Int Dorma. <laughs> season comes to a crescendo when the big fat northern opera company sing our William Tell is best bloody William Tell in the world. <laughs> Come on, come on, leave it out. Just like that. she was asking for it. Come on. You're not going to believe this. You're right, I'm not. I'm sorry I'm late. Late? We've already started. <laughs> Thank you, know everyone. Except for... We've already met. <laughs> we share the same taste in meths. <laughs> meths. The richer, smoother blend. Don't point at me. I don't like pointing. I don't like any holiday camps. <laughs> Someone's speaking when I'm speaking. Don't butt in. I don't like buttons. I don't like any holiday camps. <laughs> Marvellous. What's that? Look. The Capri Fastback GL overhead camshafts, 2000 cc engine, brilliant. Nice colour. <laughs> <laughs> nice colour. That'd be great sending you down for a car, wouldn't it? Oh, I have that one. It's a nice colour. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know anything about cars, do I? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, what's a Fastback then? Hmm? A Fastback. What's a Fastback? Well, it's a fast back, isn't it? I mean, it's a car with a fast back. <laughs> what, you mean it goes fast at the back? <laughs> yeah, it goes fast at the back and that uh, pushes the front bit forward. <laughs> so, uh, what's a GL? Pardon? What's a GL? You said it's a GL. What does it stand for? No, it's a GL, isn't it? I mean, it, it means GL. It stands for... Uh, it goes lovely. <laughs> it goes lovely. It's a really smooth ride. GL. Oh, I see. I see. <clears throat> What's a 
What's an overhead cam shot? Well, please, Gareth, I'm just trying to read my paper, if you don't mind. Please. Yeah, OK, sorry, sorry. I just wondered what uh, an overhead cam shot. Well, if you must know, it's just a cam shaft that goes overhead instead of under. <laughs> under what? Under the car. Instead of going under the car, it goes overhead. It's hidden in the roof lining, so you can't see it. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it? You're satisfied, eh? Yeah, yeah, fine. Good. 2,000 cc. 2,000 cc? Yes, 2,000 cc. 2,000 bloody cubic kilometres. <laughs> cubic kilometres? <laughs> That's a K, not a C. What? Cubic. K U <laughs> Look, you've already said you don't know anything about cars, so let's just leave it there, shall we? <laughs> Thank you. I don't know anything about cars. Well, excuse me, Norman, I don't think I'm the person who takes his car back to the garage every week since buying it. If you'd have taken my advice in the first place, you'd have ended up with that heap of rubbish. Advice? What advice? I told you not to buy the green one. <laughs> Hello. It's me, Billy. Hello. It's me, Johnny. Can you guess what we're doing today? Are we making an omelette? <laughs> Are we insulating our loft? No. Today we're having a drive in our car. Look, Teddy's driving. <laughs> we know a song about that, don't we? For he's a jolly good driver, for he's a jolly good driver, for he's a jolly good driver, Teddy Kennedy. <laughs> Whoops! Here comes a bridge. <laughs> he's gone and done it again, the cheeky chappaquiddick. <laughs> We're having a drive today because we're going to a very special party. Yes, it's a party in a special house made of acid. <laughs> That's right. It's an acid house. That's right. We've got lots of friends with us today. Look, in the back, it's Nigel the Nodding Dog. <laughs> Nigel's in ecstasy, aren't you, Nigel? <laughs> other friends with us. Can you guess who they are? Well, there's Bertie, the smoking beagle. <laughs> What's that funny smell? Is that Bertie's backy? Hmm. I think we know a song about that, don't we? <laughs> Quick, drag, wacky, backy, give a dog a split. Bertie's bag has a funny whip. <laughs> sort of backy Bertie smoking today? He's smoking Mary Jane's tobacco. <laughs> the kind of Mary Jane to give it to him. I wonder who else we've got in the back of the car. Oh, look! It's Roger, the Rottweiler. <laughs> and he wants to look his best for the party. Look, he's been powdering his nose. <laughs> to drive a jolly long way to find the acid house. Yes, it's going to be a long trip. <laughs> I hope so. So let's have a sing-along to make the miles fly by. One man went to mow, went to mow a meadow. One man and his dog went to mow a meadow. Honestly, Mrs Kelly, if you fit our double glazing, you'll wonder how you ever did without it. I'm not really interested, not just now. Well, today's the last day of our very special offer, you know, 15% off. But you must sign up today. No, I can't be thinking about double glazing right now. Well, why it... not? <laughs> you know, the main difference between us and the other bands in the 60s was we never sold out, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. We always had hundreds of tickets left. <laughs> <laughs> you see, when the other bands, like we're living in mansions and that, we never succumbed to that sort of lifestyle for one very good reason. Yeah. Well, we were broke. <laughs> we had principles, Jet. Yeah, we had. Had principles. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, we, we were looking for higher things, higher than money, higher than fame, higher than the Bee Gees. Oh! <laughs> 
No, Jed, we didn't want to sell out our integrity, man. No, I mean, I had loads of offers at the time to do all sorts of rubbish, you know, but... I'll just put a track down, they said, plug it on top of the pops, you'll sell millions, watch the money come rolling in, they said. I did at the time, Jeb, but you were so bombed out of your head, you forgot. You just named the last time I was bombed out of my head. This morning. Morning. Is that the one with all the dicky birds singing? Is that the one with the stars coming? It'll be all right. Well, Gareth, there we are, the end of another series. Yeah. The end of another series. And, you know, looking back, do you know what I enjoyed most of all? No, what? The mistakes. Oh, you mean those purely accidental outtakes that happened when we were filming <laughs> purely by accident? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, should we, should we show a few now? Oh, come on, Gareth, you can't be serious. Show the accidents. Oh, hey, come on, it is the last in the series. OK, Gareth. Here are a few of those silly mistakes. Monday. Yeah, if you can get copies of those done. Make you sure said Monday. Afternoon. Afternoon at the latest. Okay, okay. You've got yours. You've got ours. I want that stuff by Monday, right? Right. Supply again. Causing us problems, Jim. What's wrong with Big Frank? I thought he had the money ready. <laughs> Big Frank? I don't know. He's probably gone south of France. <laughs> <laughs> you know Big Frank? Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you John, you got that? Figure. Cheers. And stop there, please. Wardrobe. You know, one of the most exciting things about being an actor is you're only ever one phone call away from... Excuse me. <laughs> really? That's fantastic news. That's... The usual? Ah, uh, yes, please, Ken. Cheers. Yes. Bit slow in here tonight, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. As you may or may not know, we are the management. Stop <laughs> there, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Still can't come up with a solution. Over there. And cut. What's the matter? <laughs> Hello, Jennings. Okay. What's up there? What's up? What? The bucket. Where? Bloody <laughs> buckets. What bucket? As a matter of interest, who would like to see a big fat pair of tits? <laughs> well, here we are. Hello! <laughs>